The following is an AIDS Lifeline special presentation. The exhilaration of a motorcycle ride down a winding hill. Motorcyclists die for the experience. Last year, more than 4,000 of them were killed in accidents. But for them, the risk is worth it. Every year, millions of people fly all over this planet. Last year, 1,077 died in plane crashes. For people who fly, it's a risk worth taking. Cigarette smokers are not willing to give up their habit in spite of the risk. Last year, over 100,000 of them died of lung cancer and emphysema caused by smoking. Risky activities, we accept them as part of everyday life. And now in the age of AIDS, meeting someone in a bar and going home with them can also be a deadly risk. Track of mine. It doesn't matter if it's yours or mine. Cause if you're getting dough and you wanna get with her, yeah, you can hit her. Yo. See, Sally got a one track of mine. It doesn't matter if it's yours or mine. Cause if you're getting dough and you wanna get with her, yeah, you can hit her. I know a girl named Sally who tastes for exquisite. Saks Fifth Avenue bag made a lizard. When she was a child, her parents had money. She was spoiled rotten. And now things have gotten worse. She's a professional girl. Start to switch, give up on the in the itch. I watched her grow into a neighborhood hoe. Ran around town with every time Dick and Joe. Quiet amusing, the little did she know. That word got around, that Sally was down. Her sweet 16, but she looked 21. If the price is right, she'll be twice as nice. This the friends for a man in a bin. Then he cuts you off when he hits the skins. Now you got another one. He drops a beamer. Wake up, girl, don't be a daydreamer. Sally got a one track mind. It doesn't matter if it's yours or mine. Cause if you're getting low and you wanna get with her, yeah, you can hit her. See, Sally got a one track of mine. It doesn't matter if it's yours or mine. Cause if you're getting low and you wanna get with her, yeah, you can hit her. Sally's 19 and nothing has changed. More on the prowl, her lifestyle's foul. I see her at the club, sipping on a drink. Playing herself in her girlfriend's me. Talking about, look at him, he's cute. Thinking to yourself, does he have any loot? The guy walks up and he says hello uh, The lights are dim and the mood is mellow They talk for a few, she grabs her coat Told her girlfriends don't rock the boat Her girlfriend said don't go, you just met her Knowing all along that Sally's gonna let her Knock the boots from the bed to the floor But Sally doesn't think that she's living like a whore You know the hooker, queen of the stunts You better wake up and smell her blunt Sally got a one track mind It doesn't matter if it's yours or mine Cause if you get This is it, you know, after years of being broken up with my last boyfriend, I thought, this is it, this is the real thing. We're going to get married and run off happily together. Relax your fist. But Tema Luff's dream turned to horror. First her relationship ended, then she started having health problems. 
After several tests, her doctor came back with a diagnosis. She had been infected with the AIDS virus. And my first question was, am I going to die? And he said, I don't know. Your chances are 50-50 that you could uh, go into full-blown AIDS or you could stay where you are. We just don't know that much about it yet. Tama was diagnosed a year and a half ago. She is certain her ex-boyfriend infected her, but he refused to be tested, and Tema has lost touch with him. I think now my biggest thing is I'd like to see him off the streets because it's gotten back to me that he is still sexually active and he is practicing unsafe sex, and I wouldn't want another woman to find out the way that I found out. To this day, I can't comprehend that I've gotten this. It's real hard for me to understand that you know, they're trying to make it sound like gay men and IV drug users, and I, I'm neither. As a matter of fact, I'm totally the opposite. I've never done any of the things that everyone seems to want to think that you do in order to get this. And I'm going public because I want people to be able to look at me and say, my God, if it happened to her, it might happen to me. Was Tema just unlucky, or is AIDS a serious threat to heterosexuals? The answers can be confusing. Earlier this year, an article in Cosmopolitan magazine said, women who engage in normal vaginal intercourse have little reason to fear getting the AIDS virus. Then another bombshell this past March. Sex researchers Masters and Johnson published a study claiming the AIDS virus is spreading rapidly through the heterosexual population. According to AIDS experts, the truth lies somewhere in between. Today, every sexually active straight person faces some risk of getting AIDS. How high or low the odds depends on your sexual behavior, as we will see with four people. A university student, a single woman living in the Midwest, a businessman who travels across the country, and a single mother who lives in the drug culture. They are all playing their own version of sexual roulette. The majority of people getting AIDS today are homosexual and bisexual men. The next highest group is intravenous drug users who share needles tainted with blood containing the AIDS virus. Heterosexuals who got infected through sex represent only 4% of AIDS cases. The government estimates about 1.5 million people are infected with the AIDS virus but show no symptoms. 30,000 of them are heterosexuals. The low numbers can be deceiving, according to Dr. Norman Hurst, an epidemiologist at the University of California. He and a colleague recently published a report on the risk to heterosexuals. I would tell people that the main thing that affects uh, the degree of danger in their own sex life is how well do they know their partners. Dr. Hurst estimates the odds for a woman like Tema getting infected over the last few years at roughly 1 in 5,000. Low odds, but little consolation if you're the one. It's National Condom Week at the University of California at Berkeley. On campuses across the country, condom celebrations have become an annual event. In spite of their light-hearted approach, college students and other young people are becoming more aware about AIDS. According to a national Gallup poll conducted last year, one-third of all college students are using condoms or taking other steps to reduce their risk of infection. But most students are slow to change their attitudes and behavior. Safe sex is a girl that dresses well, a girl that is a college student, definitely. Um, someone that has a good background. I mean, some, t some girls I talk to, their parents are drug abusers or alcoholics, <laughs> and then you gotta watch out. Dan Rain is a 19-year-old sophomore majoring in business administration. He lives in a fraternity house off campus. Like a lot of young people today, Dan has a casual attitude about sex. My ideal girl is long blonde hair. Actually, I like a girl with like brown hair, with streaks of blonde hair, with brilliant blue eyes. I can tell right away. God, this is great. You want to study tomorrow? Um, yeah, study in the morning. Okay. Can do that. Yeah, I got tons of econ. To the girls, I get, the girls that I date and that are in college, they, I think they're more worried about getting pregnant. AIDS is not prevalent, a prevalent concern with the girls because 
you know, we don't hear aid lectures or aid, you know, watch out for AIDS or anything like that every day. Excellent. I've taken health classes on AIDS, so um, I know the, you know, how you can get and stuff like that. But I think a girl, if, if she's going to date a guy, I think she can tell if, she, if he's gay or not. So this concern, she knows her background, and, um, you know, and so she, you know, she guesses that, you know, this guy is safe. A few girls I've um, gone to bed with the first night that I met them, um, especially in the dancing, in the party scene where you've had several beers and um, things get really relaxed. They give in with their feelings. They show their feelings more and I definitely show my feelings more after I've been drinking. My preference is no condom and she uses the contraceptive. According to the risk scale, a college student like Dan, who has unprotected sex with six girls during his first two years at school, runs a 1 in 50,000 chance of getting AIDS. His risk of dying in a motorcycle or scooter crash is 1 in 1,200. You know, you kiss a little bit, you dance a little bit, you get a little close. And, you know, if you can sense if she's willing to go a little bit farther, and some girls are, and it's really convenient living in the house and having a party downstairs and then coming up here to um, have a dr another drink, talk a little bit, and you have your bed right there. And it's really convenient. Um, it's kind of dangerous, but it's convenient, and I've, um, I've done that. What I would like everybody to do is to put some lube on their hands and then try opening up a condom package so you can find out what it's really going to be like to be fumbling in the heat of passion. A seminar that teaches women how to make safe sex erotic. For the single woman in the age of AIDS, this may become as common as the career seminar. The only man of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Surveys show that AIDS is changing women's sexual behavior. It's a phenomenon that reaches into the very heartland of America. Omaha, Nebraska. With only one reported case of heterosexual AIDS, this city would appear to be a haven from the AIDS scourge. But Raylene Boulay worries. She is about to take the AIDS antibody test. I'm here to talk to you. I'm very concerned about the AIDS epidemic and feel that having an annual AIDS test is being a responsible person, like an annual pap smear. I don't believe there is a low risk area. Omaha has fewer people in it. Uh, they haven't had the concentration of it that they're aware of yet. And hopefully they don't. Raylene found herself back in the singles world after having been married and raising two children. Well, Omaha, Nebraska seems to have a shortage of single men, so they lead a wonderful life here. And um, <laughs> uh, this isn't probably the best hunting ground in the U.S. <laughs> We have a neighborhood bar here called Mr. Toad's. It's like Omaha's answer to cheers. And that's really fun. It really is. It's very comfortable. It's really crazy. Springtime in Omaha! Yay! The biggest change in the dating situation for me is the way my conversations go with the people I meet. That would be the basic change. Because I always was very conscientious and not very casual. But now my conversation leans more from, so what do you do for a living, to, <laughs> so what's your attitude on life? <laughs> uh, the sexiest man in a bar is the one who just gave blood and passed. <laughs> oh, all of this has a sobering effect on dating. It's almost worked in a good way, though, because it's given people the excuse to get to know each other instead of just jump into bed. And I think some people have really wanted that excuse, just haven't known how to get it. Part of Raylene's social life is her membership in Perfect Strangers, a singles club that sponsors a lot of activities, including weekly volleyball games and special dances, like the annual Hooker's Costume Ball. Raylene! While AIDS has made Raylene more cautious about meeting men, she has never believed in using condoms. I grew up in a time when Condoms was the only form of birth control, and then along came other forms of birth control, and everyone said, hallelujah, <laughs> thank 
you, God. <laughs> but, you know, and because it was clumsy and cumbersome and, and so forth. Um, and I felt for years I had a very valid check and balance system before getting involved with someone. But Raylene's own check and balance <laughs> system failed her recently. Someone she'd been dating misled her about his sexual history. That's why she decided to take the AIDS test. It was negative. The risk of getting AIDS for a woman like Raylene is about one in 10,000. If she lives in New York City, where the AIDS virus is more prevalent, her chances of getting AIDS would increase to one in 4,000. That same woman stands a greater chance of dying from lung cancer or emphysema if she's a heavy smoker, about one in 300. I was one of those people who said I had the foolproof system and I know the right questions to ask. That's, a lo that's not true. There are no right questions. There are not enough questions. Besides, you're, you're relying on the fact that this person is going to totally level with you. And with the use of condoms, you don't have to rely on that. You're relying on something that does work for sure. And this is such a different attitude than I used to have. So different. The rapid spread of AIDS among homosexuals was helped by jet age mobility, the same kind of mobility that exists in the corporate world. Every day, three quarters of a million businessmen travel throughout America. Aside from doing business, it's an opportunity for sexual encounters. Bruce Sanchez is a salesman for a Seattle-based corporation. He spends up to half his time on the road. Yeah, I find for myself personally, as far as opportunities for, you know, uh, one-night stands or quick relationships on the road, uh, my days are so busy on the road that there's not much time for that. And by the time I get to a hotel, I'm so tired, I'm not even interested in it. I would think, though, for perhaps other people, it's a place away from your normal living environment. You know, you're feeling kind of excited, you're traveling, and certainly there are opportunities on the road to have sexual contact if you wanted it, and if we're willing to pursue it. You know, I certainly don't want to give the impression that I'm out on the town and carousing around and sleeping with a different woman each week. Uh, you know, over the last two years, I maybe have been with, I don't know, 10, 12 women. Travel yeah, salesman. Yeah, I'm here for a night and then uh, that's it. That's it? No, to B Pittsburgh tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> I find over the last six months, certainly, uh, and maybe even over the last year, there's definitely been a shift in attitude for the women I've been with. Uh, uh, I find them now very concerned about the AIDS question. And, and really, I think about uh, safe sex in general. So, Kelly, come on, I really want you to try one of these. You try one of these? I know they look like something from another planet, but they're really good. No, you don't? No? All right, I'll show you. Okay, I'll show you. you re watch that. This is so good. All right, you ready? Watch this. Personally, for me, I usually have the safe sex conversation when things are starting to get a little intimate. I mean, you're certainly not going to have it when you're out to dinner on a first date. You've gone back to someone's place and you're lying on the bed or, you know, you're on a couch and things are obviously getting a little hot and heavy, um, then I'll probably say something like, you know, uh, you know, is there anything I should be worried about here? Or uh, do you have anything I should know about? Or, and, and usually they'll ask, no, do you? And I'll say, no, I'm clean. And that's, that's about it. I think if you were the type of person that was out on the road and having uh, sexual contact with people while you were in town for an evening or in town for a couple of days, um, I think you'd have a fairly high risk factor of some type of sexually transmitted disease. Your chances increase there. Or if it's a prostitute, uh, you know, you're running the risk of sleeping with someone of that, uh, of that nature. While Bruce may not have sex with prostitutes in his travels, a lot of businessmen do. Prostitution is a two billion dollar a year industry ranging from computerized escort services to teenagers turning tricks for drug money. Aside from the increased use of condoms, fear of AIDS has had little effect on business. I think businessmen who see prostitutes are generally married. The percentage of my clientele that are traveling businessmen is at least 80 percent. Prostitutes who work the streets, who are IV drug using prostitutes, don't necessarily have less education concerning AIDS. Um, they continue, however, to use IV drugs, which is very risky. 
but they also continue to use condoms, I think. A man who has sex with a different prostitute each week, even if he uses a condom, runs a one in 2,000 chance of getting AIDS. A businessman like Bruce, after five years of sex without condoms, stands a one in 10,000 chance of getting AIDS. That's greater than his one in 15,000 chance of being in a fatal plane crash. As far as AIDS goes, my personal perspective is that my chances of catching AIDS with people who uh, I consider relatively healthy sexually are fairly minimal. And I'm not willing to use a condom in order to decrease that risk. I just don't feel that that risk is all that great at present. I may change my mind in a year or two as those statistics increase. Providence, Rhode Island, this scenic New England town seems an unlikely setting for the AIDS epidemic, but the virus has been spreading here with alarming speed. Since 1984, the number of AIDS cases has been doubling every year. One source for the increase is found in these neighborhoods with their large population of drug addicts. The AIDS virus has spread rapidly among intravenous drug users and their sexual partners. When IV drug users share needles tainted with blood containing the AIDS virus, they infect other drug users. They in turn infect their sexual partners. For 28-year-old Maria, a mother of three children, the world of the drug addict has been all too familiar. Her brothers and sisters have been addicts. She herself was addicted to cocaine, and her ex-husband was an IV drug user. It got to the point to where one day he was shooting shooting a needle in front of me, and I saw how he did it. I never, I just thought that you put the needle in your arm and you just inject the, the heroin inside of your body, and that was it. But he was pumping his blood in, in and out until it turned purple. And I said, oh my God, Johnny, no wonder. That's how people get, get AIDS. It gets all purple like that. It looks, it looks close, then you share it. Despite her husband's sharing of needles, Maria didn't think she was in danger of getting AIDS herself. I didn't think that you shared a needle, you get AIDS and then make love to me. I'd get it. I just, I don't know why, I just didn't know. I didn't make that connection. Finally, Maria's sister Sarah helped her to quit using drugs and to leave her husband. Since I was small, my sister always was there because she believed that everything was going to be okay. I said, I'm going to believe her, you know. What could I lose? Sarah? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but then tragedy hit. Sarah, who had been an IV drug user herself in the past, was diagnosed with AIDS. She was upstairs in the bedrooms. And I, she said, Mary. And I said, what? She says, I'm dying. And I approached her. She was on the floor fixing her, her cable and stuff. And I hugged her from behind. She says, I'm gonna die, I got AIDS. So I ran away and I, I went downstairs into the bathroom and I cried and I, and, and I, I said, God, please, you know, because of drugs, you know, we grew apart, or my whole family. And it was like, I just got her back. You know, I, I just started getting my big sister back. And I said, God, please don't let her die. <laughs> Take this disease. She doesn't deserve it, you know. And then one day she told me that she shared needle with my husband. Then I started thinking, is it possible if she, he was infected by sharing needles, could he have infected me by making love to me? So I had myself checked. And they said, yes, you, you are at a high risk. Maria took the AIDS test. It was negative. But she continued to have unprotected sex with IV drug users who shared needles. Just because I was negative, I thought I was OK. You know, and I didn't even know. I didn't even know the dangers I was putting myself Again, again, it took, I'm so hard-headed. You know, it just can't happen to me. You know, you always think that way. Not me, I'm not homosexual, I'm not a junkie. I can't get it. 
A year ago, she met Mike, a recovering drug addict. He's been my teacher. He made me feel real comfortable with using the condom and carrying them. Maria had been walking in a minefield. Taking the AIDS test again would tell her if she had survived. Women like Maria, who have sex with IV drug users who share needles, run a very high risk of infection, one in 10. That's after five years of sexual contacts without condoms. The risks faced by Bruce, Raylene, and Dan are dwarfed by comparison. Maria took the AIDS test a second time, and to be certain, a third time. Both results came out negative. I just say I'm a miracle. If I would have kept doing that, if I would have kept practicing unsafe sex, I don't know how I, how, like the guy said, how I dodged the bullet. You know, I know I could make it. I know right now I go to two years of school and get a degree and become a, a pilot professional and work from there. And I know I could accomplish that today. You know, I have the potential, the capability. Unbelievable. <laughs> For people like Maria, who are poor and trapped within the drug culture, the heterosexual AIDS epidemic has already arrived. Experts believe it could spread to larger numbers of heterosexuals if people don't begin to change their behavior. Anyone who is sexually active and has multiple partners is at some risk for getting AIDS. Even if your risk is low, you should take precautions to lower it further. If you don't, you could end up like Tema Luft, who met someone new, fell in love, and caught a deadly disease. I could be anybody's daughter. I'm your nine to five worker. I've been paying taxes since I was 17. And I just, I, I don't, uh, I still can't figure out how I got it. I mean, I know how I got it, but it still is occasionally real hard for me to believe that I really have it. Sexual Roulette will be right back with some important information on AIDS prevention. <laughs> It only took him a few months. He started getting um, sick at around two or three months and was dead at seven. When this woman's son Gabriel died at seven months old, he was blind, had hepatitis, anemia, ulcers. He died of AIDS. Now, the solemn watch is on for her three-year-old son. He has the AIDS virus. He seems to be healthy, but doctors say he could get sick any day. Both children got AIDS from their mother, who doesn't want to be identified. She shared needles shooting up heroin. What am I, what am exactly am I supposed to feel guilty about? Because I was a drug addict? She not only shared needles, but also shared sex. Well, I don't think I pass it along to too many people. And for Gabriel's father, that's his problem. <laughs> because, um, he wasn't extremely helpful. I'm more concerned about him passing it on. So, from one to another and to another, AIDS has passed on. So the only way you can is do sex in um, sand needles. Sand needles. You don't have to use a contaminated needle to get AIDS. Baltimore's large drug population is spreading the fatal disease among their sexual partners at an alarming rate. That's the word these former users are taking to the streets. They work for Baltimore's health education resource organization, HERO. They're battling AIDS ignorance with condoms and factual conversation. When I first started this job, for instance, I could not even say there was heterosexual transmission. They go there running, but the case would be so low. But now, it's higher than four percent now. And that's because of the IV drug users. The IV drug users carry directly in the heterosexual population. It's, it is a, it's, a, it's a frightening thing, man. You know what I mean? To, um, to really look into them kind of things. You know, what would I do if I, if I did find out that I had it? You know, I, I mean, like, psychologically, I think I might zap out. Not wanting to know you have AIDS is not an uncommon feeling. This woman's 30-year-old son is dying of AIDS. Sharing the needle was easier than sharing the news. Well, when we first found out in November, okay, the doctor asked us to warn the people that was in his group. While he was there in the hospital, one, two guys came down. We told them, and we haven't seen anybody else since. 
so they could be still shooting up. Right, because it frightened them. Some of those addicts with AIDS will wait for death on the streets, homeless. Organizations are offering support, like this residential center on Fulton Street, open especially for users in treatment. You know, so, and I had a drug addiction, so I wasn't to be trusted. And a lot of my friends were homeless, and we used to get together and we used to stay in galleries, stay up all night getting high just so we have a place to stay because once you didn't have any high, the man in the gallery put you out. Drug addiction, AIDS, it's a double whammy. The drugs take away the quality of their life as the disease takes away their life. Going to work in the age of AIDS. Depending upon the profession, it can take a long time to get dressed. They're required to wear uh, protective gowns, shoe covers, hair cover, face mask, and double gloves. They are outfits most often seen in the operating room, but these aren't doctors dressed to protect a patient from their germs. They are masked morticians getting ready for an embalming class and dressed to protect themselves. It didn't used to be this way, but that was before AIDS. When working in the funeral home four years ago, say, uh, you would have a ga uh, plastic apron and gloves, and basically that was it. In our profession, we're exposed to, of course, just about everything. and. Um, People don't necessarily want to tend to think about death, so, you know, we're not exactly in the limelight. There are a growing number of professions that aren't in the limelight, but may still be at risk from AIDS. As the disease spreads, more and more people on the job are having to take precautions against an occupational hazard that is fatal and has no known cure. Right now, he is being caught. He has been hit with power punches about six. Boxing, an occupation fraught with physical hazards, has come under new rules in Maryland because of AIDS. In matches regulated by the state, ringside physicians can cancel a fight if an opponent is bleeding, even if the bleeding is not serious enough to pose a health threat. And the new rules aren't isolated to just the ring. The ringside spectators and officials be moved back several feet from ringside. It doesn't take much of a, a cut mixed with sweat uh, to be splattered out uh, several feet from the ring. These days, wherever there is blood, there is worry on the job about AIDS. At the State Police Crime Lab, where blood samples are analyzed in everything from murders to drunk driving cases, every vial is looked at as a potential health threat. Gloves, goggles, and protective clothing have become the standard laboratory fashion, and worry about accidentally contracting AIDS has even led to changes in what evidence makes it back from a crime scene. We've also instituted not taking in any syringes so that we don't have to worry about being um, stabbed by a syringe, dirty syringe. Some professions are more at risk to AIDS contact than others. People in health care have received most of the attention because they most often work with AIDS patients. Health care workers also have the highest numbers of accidental exposures to the disease. Uh, there have been approximately a dozen cases now where uh, workers in one uh, particular form or another in a hospital environment or outpatient facility have been exposed to blood from a patient uh, with AIDS. Even in the tranquil healthcare field of acupuncture, as much emphasis is being placed on the sterilized safety of the needles as on their ability to help treat people in pain. We're treating each person as though that person could possibly have a communicable disease, therefore not wanting to to transmit anything. Tattooing also relies on needles, but has not always had the best of reputations when it comes to cleanliness. Reputable tattoo artists have been fighting that image, and the chance of finding AIDS, as well as art, just under the skin, has made it more than just a public relations effort. In the tattoo industry, the talk now turns to AIDS and how to protect yourself from it. Well, they've had uh, doctors giving seminars on AIDS and what we can do to prevent the spread if an infected individual was to come into the studio, because chances are we wouldn't know it. And not knowing is too big a chance when it comes to AIDS. If, um, if I only have a few weeks of quality time, 
that I can spend with my family and people that I love, uh, that's important to me. Scott Stamford's living nightmare is over. He told me in August he was ready for the inevitable, the death that researchers have been unable to stall for all AIDS victims. Friday, October 9th, family and friends said goodbye to the man who at one time single-handedly led Maryland's fight against AIDS. He was a founding member of HERO and never stopped trying to educate the general population about the dangers of this disease. The most important thing that could come out of my being public about my illness um, would be for people to uh, come to grips with AIDS and the fact that it's killing their friends, uh, their family members, and if not already, every American household will be touched by this disease. This once active leader in the fight against AIDS had lost the use of his right arm and leg, could not walk alone, and was often left struggling to utter his thoughts during the last months of his life. All of this within two months of learning that he had AIDS. But unlike the nameless faces hidden away in some hospital ward, Stanford did not face his death in the shadow of secrecy. Thanks to a large family, he was not alone. You take what you're dealt. And Scott took what was dealt to him with a great deal of courage. And we can only do the same. This family came to cherish every moment together as precious time. For during the taping of these scenes, Scott Stamford suffered a stroke and was rushed to Hopkins Hospital. He never fully recovered. We're here. We're together. We're together today and we'll be good together every today. He's going to die one of these days, but in the meantime, we'll live with him, for him. Stamford said he faced death proud of what he accomplished. But again, even when talking was difficult, he managed to warn people who turned their heads away from the disease that no one group is dying of AIDS, that only reason not fear will keep this disease from touching all groups, all families, all of us. Because too many lives hang in the balance to uh, uh, have our fears lead the way. I'm a barber and a hairstylist, okay? Quite often when I'm shaving a person, I'll nick them or something or they'll have a bump and it'll bleed. Am I eligible for, for the, you know, picking up this disease? The barber who does that would, uh, like any time, should wash his hands afterwards if he gets a little blood on the hand. If there's no cut on the hand, nothing wrong at all, there'd be no way it could get into his body. Dr. Robert Windham is the assistant secretary of the U.S. Public Health Service and an expert on AIDS. It's still no indications of uh, public toilet seats and... Um, say um, saliva or you know someone else's urine maybe that's left on a toilet seat or something like that. Not, not one of those instances uh, would there be a problem uh, because the uh, virus lives a very short time outside of the body and the amount of virus is present in the urine and also that it's been present in the saliva in those few patients where it has been identified. It's been in small numbers. This is a condom. This is a spermicide with an anoxanol 9 kills the AIDS virus. These are the best protection we have against AIDS. Get them. This controversial public use. service announcement urges that people use condoms to prevent the spread of AIDS. But one man wanted to know... How effective are condoms? The exact percentage of effectiveness uh, is not known because it will vary on how well one uses a condom. It may be up to 90 percent or it could be 100 percent uh, effective and put a spermicide uh, preparation within the condom, put it on prior to any contact uh, with the female, and then uh, remove it immediately after the ejaculation occurs. Now are you saying that you can't uh, get AIDS from hand contact or just a regular contact from hugging a person when they're saying that you can get it so many other ways? 
the association of hugging does not at all cause exchange of body fluids. Dr. Wyndham says he's worried by the public's paranoia about casual contact with AIDS patients. We don't want people to have uh, hysteria. We want to have the hope and understanding of the problem. And particularly, uh, it's been a sad situation in many communities where we have babies uh, who have been deserted in the hospital. Mothers have deserted them. Fathers have deserted. We want people to visit these young children. And also even the AIDS patient who is suffering in the later stages of a disease. There's no reason why one should not.